I've been looking at upgrading the 8500A to the latest software uh, it requires that Windows XP be installed. I'm told that they're running XP Pro, non-embedded version. So I've gone ahead and installed that. I've also installed the latest Extreme software. Scope is now basically all working back the way it was with the original Windows 2000. I ran quite a few tests on it yesterday. I haven't really seen any problems with the latest version yet. So one of the things I've noticed is the extremely slow boot up time. Uh, it's added about a minute to the boot up. So one of the things I'm looking at now is installing a solid state disk drive to see if I can speed this up a little bit. I don't really have any need for a large uh, storage on this scope. The 40 gigabyte drive the scope came with is more than adequate for my needs. Uh, the one thing I would like to do is try to increase the download rate. So one of the things I'd like to attempt is to install a 1 gig Ethernet adapter and see if we can gain any improvements. So before we do that, I'd like to uh, benchmark the scope as it sits. My plan is to run the same software for both the 100 base T and the 1 gig. I'm going to be using my LabVIEW program. This is the same program that I demonstrated before. Again, it's just the uh, wrapper around the examples. There's now a benchmarking feature in here. And here we can see uh, this is the time in bits per second and over here is the frame rate and this is in bytes per second. I have a way to manually trigger the scope. I can also select auto acquisition which it's running in now. So right now it's telling the oscilloscope to download data every one second. But there are no triggers. So if we look at the raw data right now this data you can see is not changing. If I select the auto trigger, you can see now that it's updating once every second. So this is with a 100 megabit board. I'm using this laptop because it has a 1 gigabit connection. I'll use this same laptop for both tests. If we slide up to the start of a frame, and what I'm going to do is mark this frame. This is looking at Wireshark. Here we can see the 74, and here's the WF DAT parameter. And if we look at the end of the packet, we can see here 45 milliseconds, 48 yeah, 45.8 milliseconds. So the frame rate is roughly 40, 46 milliseconds. And again, as we can see from our program here, we're also at 46 milliseconds. So the data is correct. You can also see looking at Wireshark, uh, nothing's been changed. The MPU is still set to the default. Um, we don't want to change any of this uh, to try to optimize the performance. I just want to see if swapping out the Ethernet board does indeed yield any faster data transfers. One thing we should mention is this update right here that this is running at the one second really has nothing to do with our transfer rate. Um, currently with the amount of data I'm sending down a half a meg it's taking 45 milliseconds. So we could update this uh, screen rate so if I set it to 100 milliseconds you can see now the data is being updated roughly 10 times a second. So again, the key here is can we get it up over a hundred megabits, changing out to a one gigabit board. Here we can see it's fairly stable. I would expect there to be some hiccups as if I'm doing things with Windows. Uh, this would be pretty common.
So let's go ahead and select the other board. To make these tests, I plan to install this Intel Pro. It's a thousand GT. Just a standard PCI bus. So let's give her a shot and see if it speeds it up or does the scope become unpredictable as I'm told. Here we can see the cards now installed. Okay, there's a couple of things I'm noticing here. Uh, first of all, it doesn't appear that Extreme cares about having the second card plugged in. Uh, as soon as I enable it, I'm able to, uh, I'm basically able to just disconnect the port on the other board and connect to the second board. Uh, it seems to be totally transparent to Extreme. So now we can see 400, 444 megabit per second transfer rates, roughly what I would expect. Um, so we'll go ahead and click this to auto here. And we can see our, it's our 10 frames per second, roughly. And again, looking at our raw data, I'll go ahead and enable the trigger. Our transfer times now are well under uh, 10 uh, milliseconds so we could actually speed this frame rate up quite a bit here uh, it's now updating at uh, a 50 millisecond rate at some point here obviously LabVIEW is going to have trouble trying to draw the uh, that much information to the screen but the transfer rates themselves look pretty good. So again, I guess I'm not understanding what uh, uh, it was mentioned that there was some critical timing with the bus. I don't really understand that. Uh, I don't really understand what the problem would be that we wouldn't see these data transfer rates. It seems to be uh, very reliable. Again, at least for the work that I would do with this scope, um, I would plan on post-processing the data rather than to try to process internal of the scope. Uh, externally, I can have whatever kind of PC at my disposal. I can use the GPU. To me, it just makes a lot more sense to invest the small amount to put a better Ethernet card into the scope and uh, use a secondary PC for post-processing. You can see here the data transfer rates are slowing down quite a bit. Uh, this is really, this is just a result of I'm hammering the crap out of this PC with a LabVIEW right now. Again, it's a lot of data to be sending up to the screen. Uh, normally you wouldn't do this, but uh, for this little demo, I think that it's adequate.